Hello everyone. This is Debeshree from Cisco TAC team and this video is about controller upgrade process to 7.3 code. In this video, I'll show you the complete upgrade process for the controller from 7.2 code to 7.3 code. While doing the upgrade, you must have a TFTP server handy the CLI or the GUI access of the controller. Now, Cisco always recommends TFTP D32 as a TFTP server to be used while the upgrade process is going on because it saves or it stores more of the files and it does not give much of compatibility issues. First of all, we need the code to upgrade on the controller. We'll get the code from Cisco.com website. I'll show you how. Go to the Cisco.com website click on support all downloads. Now as I'm using a 5500 series controller, I'll upgrade it to 7.3 code. Let's check certain things before upgrading. That is show sysinfo. It will show me every details about the controller. What is the pro product version? What is the recovery image? And the name of the system and the configured country these are the settings which are shown when you are doing the initial configuration of the controller. And one more important thing is show boot. So this is the primary boot which is active. So whenever the controller reboots, it will come up with this version. And the backup boot image is 7.0. So if any problem occurs, it will come up with a backup image that is 7.0. So before upgrading the controller, you should be aware that you have you need to keep the backup configuration of the controller. I don't say that always the upgrade fails, but in case the upgrade fails, fails then we have the config. We have the backup config. So no need to worry about it. Now let's go to the download software page. We'll get the image by just typing in what type of device you need. I'm using a 5508 controller, so you have to download wireless LAN controller software. Here we go. So we have the latest version always comes up first. So we need 7.3.101.0. ED in brackets mentioned because it's an early deployment code. It includes new features and is compatible with new hardware. That's the reason it is mentioned like that. Uh, the software version which we are looking for is this one, which is for normal all types of controllers. This controller code is with the payload encryption, which we don't need because it is recommended only for Russia. So we'll download it. All right. Yes, I accept it. save file. Now while saving the file, I'll always save it under tftpd32 root folder, which is already there. I did it before. So I'll just cancel it because it's already saved over here. Now let's go to the controller to upgrade it. I'll show you through the CLI and then through the GUI how to do the upgrade so that we have the know-how for both the interfaces. I have opened the TFTP server as I'm locally uploading it through my TFTP server. My local PC is acting as a TFTP server so I need to make sure that it is reachable to my controller. So my local PCs IP address is 72.163.208.109. So I'll just check that reachability. By pinging from the controller. Send count 3, receive count 3. That means the reachability is there. The second thing is you can use TFTP server or FTP server, whatever you like, but they should be in the same subnet or in, in the routable network. Now, current directory, you have to be sure 
that your file is in that directory. So it's in the TFTP root, so it's mentioned correctly. Show directory, I have the image there. So always check that before upgrading it. I'll go to my CLI of the controller and start the download process. I have already taken a backup of my configuration of the controller. Second thing, I should be sure that you should, I'm not shutting it down while the upgrade process is started. Now I'll start it, transfer, download. I need to mention data type as code. Transfer, download, mode. See, I have an option of TFTP or STP. As I'm using TFTP, I'll make it as TFTP. Transfer, download, server IP. Now this is the TFTP server's IP, which I have to mention. 72.163. Next would be transfer download path. Here I have saved the image in my root folder, so the path would be dot. Whenever you have saved the image in root folder of TFTP server, the path should be mentioned as dot. Otherwise, you have to mention the complete path. Command would be to mention the file name. There's the file name. You have to copy and paste the complete file name. So now we'll start the download. Transfer, download, start. So it will give you before that whatever you have entered. Mode is TFTP, data type is code, TFTP server is mentioned, Packet timeout and max retries are by default 6 and 10. TFTP path is 0, sorry, dot, and it has a slash. It will add a slash by default. Then uh, TFTP file name, the complete file name. Now I'll mention, yes, I want to start it. So the code transfer has started. As you can see the progress on the TFTP server here. So it's a long file, so it will take about 5 to 10 minutes to transfer it. And then you'll see the codes and the uh, configs logs coming on while it has uploaded the image. So you uh, should make sure while the upload is going on, uh, while the upgrade is going on, you have to make sure that the controller is not switched off or turned off or any of the APs which have joined the controller are not turned off. Because when the upgrade goes on, the code is transferred to the controller and then it is loaded on all the APs which have joined the controller. So the APs will also get the code simultaneously. Now let me tell you about some features about 7.3 code. It is not supported on platforms like 4400 controller, 2100 controller, 3750 integrated controller, 6500 or 7500 series WISM controller, wireless LAN controller module. As it has many new features, it will support on the hardware like 5500, 7500 virtualized interface. And while upgrading, you should also keep in mind that you have to upgrade from any version which is 6.0.182.0 or later. It will, you cannot upgrade directly to 7.3 code when you are running a version lower than 6.0.182.0. If you are running that, then you have to follow the path, the upgrade path. You have to upgrade it to any code that is, if you are running a 5.x version or 4.x version, then you have to upgrade first to 6.0.182 and then to 7.3.
So as we see, it's on the verge of download. Yeah, it's completed. 100% is the progress which we see. And you'll see the logs coming up on the controller simultaneously. So the code transfer is starting. Receive complete extracting components. So it will give all these logs while the transfer has been done. So now the TFTP server's job is done and it will load the code on itself, flash disk, and then it will push it to the AP after that. And then it will ask you for a reboot and after rebooting it will make 7.3 code as its active load. So now uh, the question is why 7.3 code? It has many new features. It has come up with many new features and it can run on new hardware platforms. And the major change in this version is it can run on virtualized infrastructure, that is on virtualized controller. Then you will have a freedom of using any hardware without any space constraint or anything. And another new feature is high availability, which will reduce the downtime of wireless network due to failover of controller. In this release, one is to one, that is active is to standby, AP stateful, stateful switchover is supported. So that's a major change. So it will have the wireless network downtown reduced to about 70%. Now, Flex 7500 series controller do support 6,000 APs, 64,000 clients, 2,000 Flex Connect groups, 6,000 AP groups. That's a huge amount. So, as per your requirement, on a single hardware, you can support many clients, many APs. And there are enhanced Flex Connect features like split tunneling, it supports NAT and PAT, then 802.11u. All these features are added into this new hardware with new software features. So you are always on a benefit when you are loading 7.3 code. Now, as we are seeing, it's writing many other features like your autos to the flash disk, FP to the flash disk. So it will keep on loading its kernel, many other components of the controller, and then we'll ask you for a reboot. Meanwhile, this upgrade is going on. I'll show you how to do the upgrade through GUI. Now, let's go to the controller, GUI. Click on Commands, Download File. In spite of code, we have various other options to load configuration, signature file, web auth bundle, vendor device certificate, Vendor C a certificate login banner. Now, as we are doing a code upgrade, I'll select code. Transfer mode TFTP. Server details, IP address of the TFTP server. As you can see, it's already entered over here, pre-entered over here, because we did it through CLI. That's the reason it is showing here. Max retry is 10, 6, which are by default, and the file path is dot. File name is complete name of the code. Then you have to hit download, and it will proceed with the download process, very similar to the CLI. The moment it comes up with reboot, then we have to proceed with the reboot. Now we are back with the reboot page on this. So it has asked TFTP file transfer is successful. 
reboot the controller for update to complete. Optionally, pre-download the image to APs before rebooting to reduce network down downtime. Reset system. Would you like to save them now? Yes, and it will reboot itself again. So let's check while well, it comes back that it has come up. A continuous ping. It's back. It was not restarted. It will restart now. Okay, the controller has come back up again. Now let's check what's the load it is running now. So it is running 7.3.101.0 and the recovery image is still 6.0.182.0. This is how the upgrade is done. Let's check the same on PuTTY the CLI shows this info we have the code here show boot this is the previous image which was uh, there and we upgraded it to 7.3.101 which is active so this is how we have to do the upgrade of the controller. And this was a short video on that. Thank you.